we're going to get some more practice working with quantifiers in this example. We're going to analyze the logical form of some different statements. The first statement we're going to analyze is the statement A union B is a subset of C difference D. And by analyze the logical form, we mean instead of using set notation like union and subset and difference, let's write this out using logical symbols like for all and there exists, ands, ors, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down and kind of systematically remove the union and the subset and the difference and replace those with equivalent logical expressions involving ands and ors and things like that. Okay. So first let's work in what it means to be a subset. A subset, if A union B is a subset of C slash D, that means every element of the set A union B is also an element of C difference D. So this means for all x, x in A union B implies that x is in C difference D. That's just the definition of a subset. So I've already been able to get rid of this symbol by substituting in a logically equivalent expression. Okay, so that's one step. So what is this equal to? This is equal to for all x, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on our conditional um, quantifier here, or conditional connective, I'm sorry, and I'm going to replace it with a logically equivalent expression. Anytime I have an arrow, I can replace that with not the first thing or the second thing, right? That's the definition of our conditional connective. So I'm going to take not the first statement or the second statement. So I've been able to eliminate the conditional connective by replacing it with an equivalent logical expression. Okay. So that's just the definition of our conditional connective. This is equal to for all x, not x in A or x in B. What did I do here? So I'm working here, I have another union right here. The definition of x being in the union of A and B is x is in A or x is in B. So right here, all I'm doing is using the definition of union for this first part. I'll leave the or alone. And then let's use the definition of set difference for the second part. What does it mean for x to be in C difference C, D? It means that x is in C and x is not in D. So I've replaced the set difference with its logically equivalent form. Okay, so we've just used the definition of set union and set difference to do this line right here. You can probably guess what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and use De Morgan's. Anytime I have not an expression, I can distribute that not using De Morgan's. So I can write that as x not in A and x not in B just by using De Morgan's. And then I can do or just leave the second part alone. Okay, so I've used De Morgan's right here. And we now have an expression that involves symbols like for all, element of, not an element of, ands, ors, things like that. And this is a perfectly logically equivalent statement that is equal to what we started with initially, except we've gotten rid of all of our pieces of notation that involve sets. Okay, So what does this new expression say? It says that for all x, x not in A and x not in B, or x is in C and x is not in D. Okay, that is a logically equivalent statement to the original statement of A union B is a subset of C difference D. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do one that's very, very similar. Let's work with the statement A union B is a subset of C, is not a subset of C difference D. So this is basically the not of what we just worked with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the statement we had, but then I'm going to not it. I'm going to put a not right there, because this is really just the opposite of what we just worked with in Part A. In Part A, we had A union B is a subset of C difference D. In Part B, we have A union B is not a subset of C difference D. So I can just start with the logically equivalent statement to A union B is a subset of C difference D, and then put a not out front to say that it's not a subset. Okay, So let's work on this a little bit. 
The next thing we're going to do is use the quantifier negation law. Instead of not for all x, I'm going to write that as there exist an x not, and then leave all of this stuff alone. So that's what the quantifier negation law lets us do. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use De Morgan's, and I'm going to distribute the not across everything. So I have to change my or to an and, and then I need to put a not here, okay, just like I put a not here. So I have to not both of those and flip the middle symbol if I want to apply De Morgan's. So I'm just use De Morgan's there. And then let's go ahead and use De Morgan's one more time. Let's use De Morgan's to distribute across there and use De Morgan's to distribute across there. So I have to change the x not in A to x in A and the and symbol to an or. So I've used De Morgan's. We leave our middle and alone. Then I use De Morgan's again, so that's x not in C or x is in D because I negate those. So I've just used De Morgan's one more time. So this is a logically equivalent statement to A union B is not a subset of C difference D. And look what it says. It says that there exists an X that is in A union B and is not in C difference D. That's what this logically equivalent statement says, which would be the definition of a subset. If I can find some X that's in this set that's not in this set, then it can't be a subset of C difference D. So that's some practice of how you can manipulate expressions involving things like unions and subsets and set differences and basically get all those swapped out with logical quantifiers, things like there exist or for all, and also the logical symbols we're used to using like or and and.